Well, good morning. good morning. Welcome to Worship with St. Luke's this morning. My name is Amy Spivey, and I'm grateful to serve as one of the pastors in this church community. And it is just a joy for us to be together for worship this morning. If you are here in person, it is good to see you. And if you are worshiping online this morning, we are glad that you have come to be a part of worship wherever you are. I want to say a special welcome this morning. If you are a guest with us, we are thankful that you have connected with our time of worship this morning and pray that you will meet God's grace and hope that you will explore how to engage in the ministry that we share through St. Luke's. I want to invite you this morning to greet one another as we do that in a way to connect those of, of our friends who are worshiping online as well as those of us in person. And it is a very unconventional ask, isn't it? To say that if you have uh, uh, access to the, the, the live feed on Facebook this morning, it is okay to take your phone out and open that up, put it on silent, and just greet those people who are online this morning. And those of you online, we hope that you will greet us um, as well. We would love to hear from you this morning, too. As we gather, you can connect with St. Luke's at the website, slumc.org forward slash connect, where you can find information, a way to um, indicate that you have worship with us today, and learn other things about St. Luke's as well. So as we join our hearts and lives this morning, let's give God this time of worship, and let us worship together.
This morning we offer our prayers and praises back to God this morning. And there's a lot of praises out there, I know. If you have praises that you would like to share, you're welcome to lift those up right now. And if you're online, you can put them in the chat as well. Are there any, are there any praises out there? No praises? <laughs> Spring is coming. The weather is, is it changed for just a day. Um, so we got a glimpse of something special. And so um, we're glad of that. Any other praises out there? I have a praise. Okay. We just finished the four service of the class. Scripture on the 17th. 17 years. Once again, the women won, which means that they're happy and they're not mad at me. So 17 years of scripture bowls. That's, that sounds really awesome. So praises to God for deep learning and for healthy competition, um, competitiveness. Any other praises? We are thankful the choir is back in the chancel area um, this morning, so that is a praise for sure. Anybody else have a praise this morning? Well, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. And so there are a couple people I want to lift up. And if you are online and, and would like to have some prayer requests lifted up, please put them in the chat or go to our website, as Amy mentioned, slumc.org forward slash connect. Um, so this morning, um, I would like to lift up Frances Gerard. Um, she is recovering uh, from home. She had some things going on. And then also um, Lynn Haynes, um, a member of the Golden Bible School or Bible Study class, um, passed away yesterday. And so please lift up her family um, and those that knew her as well. And so um, as we go to the Lord of Prayer, please fill out your prayer request cards or lift up any names as well. O oh, gracious and loving God, you are a good, good Father. One that loves us with an unconditional love. One that loves us despite ourselves, And that holds value to each one of your children. God, we come into this house of worship with joy and thanksgiving that we not only get to worship you again today as yesterday, but we get to worship you in community with one another, both near and far, both in present and online. God, it is the beauty of family that you give us in our faith, in our journey together. You sent out the disciples two by two, but you join them in ministry and you join us in our worship as we join one another. And so, Lord, we are so thankful for that. Lord, as we come into this place from different directions, we know that each one of us carries with us things that are on our hearts and our mind. Some enter this space with heaviness and burden where others might enter with freedom and ease. And so, Lord, wherever we find ourselves in those spectrums, we give our hearts to you, God, because you tell us, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. So in our worship today, oh God, I pray for rest for your people. That there is peace in the spirit where they find themselves in the scripture this morning and in the music and in the conversation. That they know that the world is still out there, but in this moment, we just have to be present with you. And you're calling us in to a time of holiness with you. God, open our hearts this morning that we might receive what it is 
you would have us glean from your word in the gospel of Matthew, and through the words of your shepherd, Amy. Lord, we ask that not only that you fill us with your spirit, but we are ignited again in our hearts to serve you, to love you, and to be passionate worshipers for you always. And so, Lord, as we are gathered in this worship together, both near and far, we ask you, God, to, to show your face in mighty ways. We ask you, O oh God, to bring comfort and strength to those in hard places. We lift up those recovering at home. We ask you, O oh God, to bring mighty healing over the grief in our nation, but especially for the Haynes family. Lord, we pray for those that are bringing prayer requests that are unspoken, that seem like so heavy that the world feels like crumbling around them. God, we know our strength is weak, but your strength is mighty. So, Lord, provide in those places. And God, as worshipers of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray knowing that you taught us the prayer to pray when words seem to face our Father, Lord is heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. <coughs> Thank you to uh, the St. Luke's Choir. Welcome back. Um, we're glad to have them leading us again. And I'm mindful as Marie is playing um, that um, we're missing Greg in the midst of, of worship. And I'm mindful of that. And 
uh, thankful for his presence, but um, grateful for your continued willingness to serve and praise God through music. Um, I'm just giving this space up here a little test drive, you know? Um, I've, I've decided that I'm just going to try kind of different spaces and see how it goes. And sometimes preaching behind the pulpit, although it's um, practical and, and easy, sometimes it feels like there's a big barrier between me and you. So I'm going to do it a little differently today. So let's see how it goes today, and we'll just, we'll just keep trying and, and seeing what happens. It is certainly a joy to come and bring a word today. It is something that I have been thinking a lot about as I've come to be a part of ministry here with St. Luke's. And as I think about the ways that Scripture and the scriptural narrative can inform our lives of faith, to inspire us, to, to set an example for us. And it is certainly um, a, a primary place for us in thinking about the direction for, for our lives as Jesus followers and for our church. Today, I want to invite us into a, a time of reflection and, and uh, learning and maybe digging a little deeper into Scripture. It comes in the context of Matthew's Gospel in Matthew 28. This is the very end of Matthew's Gospel, and we often call the, the very last part of it the Great Commission. Well, it, so, it's, it sounds very significant, doesn't it? It sounds extremely important, the Great Commission. And maybe so much so that we think, oh my goodness, I'm not sure if I can, I'm not sure if I can really step up to that one, the Great Commission. However, I want to reframe it a little bit for us to think about how it, instead of being something so significant that might feel far-reaching for us, that it might actually be something that is reflected in an everyday journey. Right? Maybe it's something that um, it, it doesn't have to feel so monumental, but could, could be something that we try each and every day to claim even just a little bit. So for today, in, in this time, we're going to be looking specifically at Matthew 28 uh, for verses 16 to 20, the very end of the gospel. And I want you to hear these words. Maybe they're, maybe they're words you've heard often. Maybe they'll be newer to you. Maybe you haven't necessarily revisited them lately. But we are going to revisit them, not only today, but for the next couple of weeks as well. Because I believe that in a sh just a short text, we can really find a lot of rich learning in that. So I guess that really means that you're going to go home today with some homework, right? To take with you the opportunity to look at Matthew 28. You can look at that whole chapter, but especially those verses at the end that we're going to hear read today. So Matthew 28, 16 through 20, hear this word. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much that your word comes into this time of worship in a way that it might fall fresh upon us. God, we ask that you would open our hearts and minds, that we would receive the great commission today 
in a way that will help us to, to be encouraged, to be inspired. And we do that following closely in the footsteps of Jesus. And so it is in his name we pray. Amen. So we find ourselves in Matthew's gospel. It's the first gospel in the New Testament. It's, of course, one of four. And we know that each of the gospel stories uh, use the, the, the context in which they're written so that they tell a story that's relevant um, in the context of their people. Now, Matthew is often known to be the, the most Jewish of the Gospels. That means that, that the writer was putting the narrative of Jesus into the context of that community, uh, probably a Jewish community, and we know that God's people, the Jews, were a close, a small, a unique, and, and probably in a lot of ways, a tight-knit group. Right, because they were, they, were, they were unique in the world. That, that, was their, that was their purpose, to be unique so that the world would see God through them. So in that context, we know that Matthew has written and offered the story of Jesus. And, and thinking about it in that context, it, I think, shows a new light on the Great Commission. Think about if, if Matthew's writing to a particularly Jewish community, what it, might, what it might say to them to say, go and make disciples of all nations, right? That's going to be something that pulls God's people out of their own context, their own particular um, understanding of God. And so that, that's, an, that's an important call upon the lives of God's people. Now, the other important place of context for this is that it comes within the story after Jesus has died and has been raised. So the, so the, the calling that's going to be given to the people is being given by the resurrected Jesus. This is Jesus who has, who has come alive. The one who they thought had died. Yet in this particular place, we know that, that they are seeing the unimaginable. They are encountering something completely and utterly impossible except it wasn't. It wasn't because Jesus is there with them. Now, in particular, our focus today is going to be in that first part, in 16 and 17 in particular. So as we think about the context of Matthew and and the, the gospel, we think about the context of of how the people are meeting Jesus, the resurrected Christ. Let's let's think a little bit about those initial verses, 16 and 17. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, it says, two things happened. When they saw him, they worshipped him. That's the first thing. The second thing, but some doubted. So they're standing before the risen Christ, having followed the directions to come to this place. And when they see him standing before them, some worshiped and some doubted. Now, it's interesting to hear this word, doubt, because it is in this context a word that is only found 
two times in all of Scripture. It's found in Matthew's Gospel in this particular chapter 28. It's also found in chapter 14. Now, 14 is the story where Peter steps out and walks on water. So if you remember that story today, you'll probably remember what happened. Peter stepped out and walked on the water. And then what? He doubted and he fell in. Started And, and Jesus reached a hand out to Peter. Right? So that story and the story of the people doubting here in the 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 calling of the Great Commission are the two places this word is found. It's a, a Greek word in the original context of Scripture that is distatso. Now, this word distatso means in, in some ways two stances. It means going two ways. Now, are you starting to to get a sense of what this, what this means. It also means uncertain at a crossroad. Now think about that just a minute. If we're, if we're envisioning the people, they've gone to this place where they've been asked to go and the resurrected Christ walks up and we're told is, is standing in a place where they can see Him... I am not surprised that they are uncertain and standing at a crossroad. Don't you agree? Right? Because here they are, people who have grieved deeply. They have grieved deeply for their Lord who died on the cross. Yet before their very eyes, they're seeing Him. I, I kind of can't blame them for, for feeling a little uncertain, maybe even doubting. Now, I want to say that in this, in this story, doubt, doubt doesn't mean loss of faith. Sometimes that's what we think about with doubt, especially if we're thinking about um, Thomas in John's Gospel, right? You think doubting Thomas, he didn't believe. Well, no, it's not something that cancels out belief or erases faith. Instead, doubt is that which puts us at a crossroad of uncertainty. We're just not sure. Now, I wonder today, are you always sure of everything? Do you always feel like you are certain you have everything figured out. Do you always feel that way, that you have everything figured out? Raise your hand if you always feel like you have everything figured out. Nobody. And for those of you online, not a single person raised their hand. Right, because we, we don't have it all figured out. Right, there are so many times, like... The, the disciples standing before the risen Christ that we, we look and we just don't know. That's not because we don't have faith or because we don't believe, but instead because sometimes we know in our human lives, in this world where we live, things are uncertain. Now I want us to consider today what that might mean for those who are standing before Jesus because they are, they are looking probably with astonishment and thinking, just a moment ago, I knew that my Lord was gone. They're probably thinking, am I, am I seeing things clearly? What is happening? Right there, yet again, their lives are being turned upside down and standing before them is a a reflection of somebody who they knew before, who they never thought they'd see again, and here they are. No wonder they felt doubtful. 
No wonder they were standing at a crossroad of uncertainty. No wonder they just weren't sure. I think it's rather refreshing to be reminded that we do not always have to feel like we need to have everything figured out. Because when we do, it sets us up for something that is is too far-reaching in many ways because sometimes we just don't know. We need some time to discern, some time to to think. We need to, to... in those moments, be surrounded by people who can help us, right, to, to rely on God for direction. So here we are in the face of the risen Christ. And we don't have it all figured out. But what we know and what they knew was that Jesus was with them. In some way that they could not fully understand at that time, Jesus was with them. That's a helpful reminder, I think, when, we, when we're standing at a crossroad, when we're uncertain, we're unsure, because they were standing on the cusp of a future, a future that they just moments before thought would be one that was more related to the cross. But in fact, now it's a future more related to new life in Jesus. Now, I wonder what kind of places that you've experienced uncertainty. When you're trying to decide, maybe not feeling very confident, maybe feeling some doubt, right? Those times in our lives when we're just not sure. We're just not sure. One of the things I was thinking about the other day relates to a person, a character in a television show that that Tim and I are watching. Now, um, Tim, my husband, and my daughter are here today. So after the service, hopefully you'll, um, for those of you here in person, we'll get to meet them. Um, but Tim and I are watching on Sunday nights uh, Masterpiece Theater on PBS. I don't know if you do. It's the Sunday night slot that, that um, everybody used to, used to settle into when Downton Abbey would come on every Sunday night. Well, it's that time slot, 9 o'clock on Sundays, and it's a show that's called All Creatures Great and Small. It's a, it's a reboot of a previous show, right? It, it's about James Harriet, a, a veterinarian, a, a person who worked with animals, of course, lots of things written about this character and um, um, by, by, by him, and um, this is about him. And the character in all creatures great and small, uh, James, he is someone who has come from Glasgow uh, in Scotland, and he has uh, trained to be a vet, and he has found a position with a vet in the rural uh, dales of Yorkshire. So he goes from Glasgow, the big city, to, to the rural countryside, and it is trial by fire. He is learning all kinds of things he could have never known. But what, what we see in the story as it unfolds is that James finds himself at a place of uncertainty at a crossroads. He's left his family He's left the home that he knows, the community that, that, that has loved him and nurtured him, and he's gone to a place where he also has found nurturing community, love, and he has found, found new life in the midst of that. 
and he's conflicted. He's uncertain. Does he go home? Does he stay? We, we don't know yet what's going to happen because we're in the middle of it. Uh, so so we're not, we're not, I'm not even sure what's going to happen with him. But it is one of those examples when we think about that where you, he's being pulled in two different directions, not sure, probably even doubting, should he have come at all? Yet, he finds good things in both places. So what do you do? He's on the cusp of a new future for his life and his profession. And the people who are standing before the resurrected Christ were also on the cusp of a new future. Yet, they weren't quite sure. They were uncertain, and they didn't have it all figured out in that moment with everything before them. It was so unbelievable. Right? Jesus, the resurrected Christ, standing there. They did not let go of their faith. They were standing firmly in faith, yet being pulled in two directions of uncertainty. So today, as we think about the people who doubted, right, this was a part of the Great Commission I'd never really explored. The doubting people, I, I just hadn't really focused in on that. What a, what a, a, a beautiful example for us as God's people, as followers of Jesus, as God's church, that we do not have to have it all figured out right now. That regardless of, of what our experience is of faith right now, Jesus is with us. The resurrected Jesus continues to usher us along in the path of new life. And we don't have to have it all figured out right now. What a, a refreshing and freeing reminder that in the face of uncertainty, on the cusp of a future that has yet to be revealed, we know that Jesus is with us regardless regardless of whether we have it all figured out. Jesus is still there. So today I want to lift up the doubters of the Great Commission. Right? They might just be a reminder to us that when we are standing in a place where it feels like a crossroad, where are we going? What are we going to do? I don't know how we're going to get there. What is God going to do in the midst of our lives? How are we going to do it? What are we going to accomplish? How is it going to happen? Right? We need to remember the doubters at the Great Commission. That Jesus was standing with them. And that Jesus was calling even them. And that they could trust. Trust in the risen Christ. So church, know today that even if we are personally at times and maybe even today feeling uncertain, it's okay. Jesus is still with us. Even if we as a church are feeling a little uncertain, that we certainly don't have it all figured out, it is okay. Jesus is with us. And we can trust in the risen Christ who reminds us that new life goes before us. So come with me, friends, and stand with me at the crossroads and, and trust that Jesus is leading the way into new life. Let us pray. 
God, we thank you so much for your word, for the great commission, for the doubters, God. Those people who, who claim faith and who believe in Jesus but are just not sure, haven't figured it all out. God, and we pray today that as, as we continue to follow Jesus, as we step out on the cusp of a future that we would follow Jesus knowing that he leads the way with new life. God, what a comfort. What a gift. Uplift us today, God. Help us to prepare our hearts to hear this word of the Great Commission and know that every day, little by little, we can respond And so we do that knowing that we follow closely with Jesus, our risen Savior. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Amy, for that wonderful message. I invite our ushers forward as we prepare to give our tithes and offerings back to God.
and sing and just sing with us our closing hymn, Go Make of All Disciples.